Hey you guys, today we're going to be talking about one of the best portrait artists of all time, John Singer Sargent. We're going to be looking at his techniques, what art is, and how this painting works so well. Let's get right into it. So first of all, I want to talk about the fundamental purpose of art. And not only the purpose, but what it's really doing. And I hear so tirelessly from so many people that everything is so subjective and there's no objective quality to everything. And the concept is the most important. That's what you hear in the modern art world very consistently. And if you go to a conceptual art gallery, I would not even regard that really on similar terms with traditional art. And that the main reason for that is because traditional art communicates unconsciously, whereas contemporary art communicates consciously. What I mean by that is if you go into an old architectural building or if you look at a traditional painting done by a master, you're going to get this feeling of resonance with it. It could be called the relational factor like it is in Jungian psychology, but it's kind of like your enema, it's your enemas, whatever. You can relate to it in a certain way. You go in there and you feel comfortable or you like it and you can't really describe why. And lots of things in life are like that. If you look at like shoes, you might like certain types of shoes rather than other types of shoes. And if you look at a painting and it strikes you, there's not just randomness going on. That's, it's not just randomness that causes that. It's a very clear orchestration. And what's really important here, what I'm going to be driving home today by analyzing this, is it's really sophisticated communication. And it's not only communication like I'm doing you right now into your left brain consciously. It's very, very sophisticated, unconscious communication. So what do I mean by that? Well, because art is a language fundamentally... Every single medium has its own different ways of expressing that language. It's like in verbal language, you have syntax, or you can use repetition, or you can use onomatopoeia, for example. All these techniques that you're using to change up the words, it gives off a different effect. And it's a similar thing in the medium of art. In art, rather than syntax or words or sentences, all this other structure, you have values, you have colors, you have edges. And when you're looking at a guy like Sargent, the reason why we deem him to be a master in the traditional arts is because he's a master at unconscious communication. So what do I mean by that? Well, you might look at this painting and you might think it looks like it was done by happenstance. And part of that is true because a lot of the time artists aren't even consciously aware of what they're unconsciously communicating. That, what that really means is that they might have their sitter sit down in a certain position and they like that certain position. It might look interesting to them. But if you really delve into the reasons why it looks interesting, you start seeing a lot of common patterns in these master's paintings. So if you look at this one, which is the painting we're going to be analyzing today, the Daughters of Edward Darley Bolt, you can look at this figure and it has this certain, it has a certain quality to it. It, it. it looks like she just stood there and it was just by happenstance, but there's also a lot of sophisticated things going on. So one of these things is the overall composition and this is the first thing that I think when you're breaking down a master painting or even just a painting in general you should always look at the overall value shapes so what do I mean by that value is essentially dark to light right so if you use a lot of dark then your lights will look lighter and you're going to want to look at the lights light uh, more if you look at the main value masses here what's really working is that you have this general composition that's very mid-tone behind her and then you have this very light triangle and what that causes is an emphasis on the white triangle so if you can abstract it out to this extent and you look at the shape that you want to draw your viewers attention towards that means you're communicating in a clear sophisticated way right if you hadn't done it this way and let's say the dress was the same value as the background it's not gonna pop out at much and what you're saying to your viewer unconsciously is this dress is just as important as the background, which doesn't make any sense, right? So a lot of the time your concept is going to be really quite simple, especially in the traditional methods. Now you might have, you know, a lot of time they'd have like a biblical story or something like that that they're trying to represent, which has its own complexities towards it. But if you're thinking about it just representationally what story you're telling, the story that he's telling here, even though it's a gorgeous painting, it's a really simple painting. It's just, here's the four daughters in this particular house. This is their character, blah, blah, blah. But it's not super complex and layered. So I would, I would say to avoid making 
your concepts too layered and complex, and I would err towards the side of simplicity. And the reason for that is in art, to just distill it down to its most basic bare bones forms, you have what you say and how you say it. Now, if you look at this, it might seem like an oversimplification, but it's really what's going on. What you're saying, what Sargent is saying here is that there's this girl standing, right, and she's looking at the viewer. That's what it's trying to say. So it's not that complicated, right? But if she had worn a different dress, for example, that didn't have this overall value shape, and she was wearing, let's say, a dress like this, and she could still have, you know, her legs or something like that was in this direction, and then the rest of the figure, let's say you just turn that to midtones, it's going to give less of a... It's going to give less of a certain feeling, right? It, it's not going to be as important towards the face. Your eye is going to be drawn down. And that's because when you're looking at lines and the way that you're designing your shapes for your painting, you always want the shape language to point towards the subject. And if you look at this painting, Sargent does this so well with every single, every single one. So if we turn on the opacity here, let's just look at this. Triangular composition, right? Because the dress flares out from the skirt and then it goes up towards the face. Now you might this is what this is what you really need to develop is an eye for this kind of stuff and how to break things down simply. Because you might say, oh well, this isn't actually a triangle. There, there's these arms coming out, and you want to just ignore like the the subtle details because they get in the way of the large value masses, which are really doing all the work. So when you're trying to look at a figure, you're designing it not to be exactly the shape that you need it to be, but you need it to fit in a good design but still relate to the representational realm because as soon as you compromise your representational accuracy for your abstract design what consistently happens is that it, it makes the viewer feel disillusioned by it and the reason for that is if something doesn't look the way that it should in a very obvious way it doesn't matter how good your abstract design is it's going to be a little bit unsettling especially if the other aspects of it are very clear so if, if Sergeant had just cut off her arms, for example, which is what I'm saying here, and just made her into a total triangle, it would not have looked as good, right? It just would not have looked good. You, you constantly want to be balancing how much can I shift and mold and, and push this, this painting into my abstract design. And you want to just be really careful and you always want to be constantly judging your alterations that you're making to make sure that they're making the painting stronger and that you're fitting the balance between those two. Look at the this, right? Again, now this isn't quite a triangle, right? It's more of a square, but really the reason why a triangle works so well is because not just the shape in particular, but it's because you have converging lines. If I go like this, you know that your, your eye is gonna go upwards, right? It feels like this up here is important. And what's beautiful about what Sargent has done here is that he uses these converging lines consistently in every single character. So look at this, converging, converging, again converging and even here where she's using a completely different dress and this is why it seems more intentional because you could just say oh well it's just you know the byproduct of the dress that they're wearing and by the way fashion design also uses these principles so even if sergeant had designed it and told them to put on this particular clothing it could have been the fashion designer that had this unconscious or conscious understanding of this principle but look the fabric coming over here and the light spot there boom triangle right so you see this consistent use you see this consistent use of shapes and how he's using shapes to taper the eye now besides just shapes if we look at the overall composition here it's actually not that complex and what i would really suggest you do is just squint your eyes for me right now if you squint your eyes you can see that what pops out it's actually quite magnificent once you see the design of this what pops out is her 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 and her right Boom, squint your eyes, and then you know exactly what is important. Now, what does your squinting your eyes really do? What it kind of does is that it represents what the right brain is going to be taking in, what kind of information it's taking in. Because just like the, and I'm using right brain not as a structural statement, but more of a useful analogy. And the unconscious side of yourself is not really looking at the specifics of what eye shape she has or what eyeshadow she has on or the color of her dress. It doesn't really care about that kind of stuff. It really cares about the overall picture. And the overall picture, if you stand back really, really far, are these four girls. And that's really what the painting is about, right? Now, if he had blown up the value in this vase, it would immediately obscure the purpose and it would make it visually worse. 
less viewers would resonate with it. And this is why this language is not just subjective. It's not just for one person, although you might have subjective preferences for certain colors, for example. But there's this sort of objective language of art that we have developed as a species and it, we really resonate with it. And we resonate it with it when it's done in very particular ways. And this is one of them. It loves when there's one subject and it's not obscured by a bunch of random stuff, right? And if we, and let me just, just demonstrate this to you to prove it. If we take this vase here and we blow up the value, look at that, you guys. Back up. This painting is ruined. Now, it's not even because, obviously, when you raise up the value here, it's not doing consistently what it would actually look like in light. And, you know, the edge is kind of hard and all this other stuff. But even if you rendered it out at that value, the entire painting is ruined. Do you see that? Do you see how bad it is now? I mean, it, it's completely ruined, right? It's gone. So really be careful with your large value masses. They make or break your painting. And obviously, abstract design is extremely important but if all you have is abstract abstract design and your representational skills are extremely poor it's not really going to work out very well because in art what what everybody pretty much notices is that e even if you have one fundamental down completely flat like line for example you're really good with lines especially in drawing or something like you know how to overlap them you know how to use their weighting you go to that but your proportions suck or your values aren't good or your edges are terrible all this other stuff it's ruin it already it ruins the painting even if you're really good at one of these aspects and that's why being a master is not just being mastery over one of these domains of art it's understanding every single one and doing it all right and that's what sergeant did and that's why it's such a pain to actually get to his level that's why it takes decades to achieve this kind of skill because he's using his colors right he's using good muted colors he's using his values correctly he's using great edges he's using amazing brushwork he's using composition and narrative and all this so all this stuff is working simultaneously and then your subconscious just absorbs it like a sponge. You, the second your eyes, you know, the second you lay eyes on it in the museum, you look at it straight away and it just captures your attention. And the amount of processing that you really think about like the subconscious does at that point to determine whether the painting is good is rapid quick because you can go through painting to painting to painting in, in museums and one of them is going to stick out and it's because all these value masses work and it's just insane how this process works but sergeant you have to be conscious of these things because if you're not conscious about how to use your values how to use your colors for example if you're not conscious of these things what's going to happen is you can't really crutch on your intuition for too long because if all you're doing is just intuitively painting i like this i don't like this then when you get into a problem or you don't understand why something looks the way that it does, why it looks good or how to replicate a good painting you've done in the, you've done in the past or how to fix a problem that you see, you don't consciously understand any of this, you're, you're screwed, right? Like you can't do anything. All you can do is just hope for the best and keep doing iterations until you fix it, which is honestly a very pick and shovel method. So what's really important here is not just getting an intuitive understanding, but understanding consciously, okay, this is how he's using his values, this is how he's using triangular composition, for example. This is how he's designing it. All these things, really, really important. And that's why we study the masters, like Sergeant. So another thing you'll see that in this composition, what's really interesting is that consistently, people are told not to use even numbers in compositions. And the reason for that, I heard that at first, and I was like, eh, that sounds kind of stupid. But the, the reason why it actually is, is because if you have a grid, let's say, of four, it's that is radically different and i know it seems like a simple difference but it's radically different from if you have a grid of nine now what now what's the biggest difference here okay the difference is that one of these squares is really important and all the other squares are not important this one actually communicates more effectively than this one now the reason for that is because these all share the same sort of conceptual understanding they're on the perimeter versus this one feels special right this one feels special this I mean, every single square is equally as important. So if you take that, I mean, you use that in architectural design too. Like when you're putting up paneling, you're not going to put up four panels on a wall because it's going to look weird. You don't have a, a, you don't have a center, you know, you don't have a subject basically. And it's the same thing in this abstract design. What's really interesting about this painting is that Sargent had four kids, right? That's so there's a lot of time too, when you're trying to create good abstract design you're given certain representational constraints like i was talking about earlier and one of them is that abstractly odd numbers look better versus he was given four children so what is he supposed to do about that 
What's interesting is what he seemed to do is that he created a really light value here, really light value here, really light value here, and then he put her face in shadow. Now, we don't exactly know if this was a conscious or unconscious choice, or even if, if it was just, you know, happenstance or something, but it works really well. And it, you can see that if I take this and I raise up her face to around the value of the other kids, it doesn't really look quite as good. It, it, like, you, you, you sense that there's four objects in the room immediately. And it's kind of, you know, it's it's a very subtle thing, right? A lot of these things are very subtle, but it doesn't really look as good. You can see that that between that. I think this one looks much better, this version. The sergeant has done this, it looks much better. And, and when you're looking at the faces too in these overall value masses, you'll notice again, creates a sort of triangle. Triangles are just really useful uh, shapes. Uh, sometimes they're overused and overanalyzed and people get too much in the weeds of it, but it does make a large difference if you're using a triangular composition. It really is a good format. Another thing too that's really interesting is his more rep representational techniques. If you look at this and you look at this girl, what's really consistently done wrong when painting loose is that the shape of the nose, the, uh, the shadow shape that it creates, this right here, that right there, it's overly sharp. And if you really get, get in there, what he's done is that he's actually softened the edge between the light and the dark and the light and the dark over here. Now it, it is sharp because cast shadows, as we know, creates uh, sharp edges, right? If you have a ball or you have, a, let's say a cube or something like that, and you're pouring a ton of light right onto it, and then you're pouring the light over here, then what's gonna happen is that this shadow shape is gonna have an extremely sharp edge. Now what's interesting about edges and shadows is that the actual start of the edge is sharper and then as it gets further out more bounce light more ambient light interferes with it so then what happens is you get a bit of a softening around this shadow so you can see if we exaggerate that it actually ends up looking better but even in this case you're never going to want to make a lot of stuff super sharp and in painting, I think Marco Bucci talked about this, you have three different types of main edges. You have the hard edges, the firm edges, and then you have the lost edges. And obviously there's gradation within that just like there is in value. But if you look at painting, if you use your sharp edges very sparingly. Sargent was so good at this. He used sharp, even though, it, what's really interesting about this is that since your eye is drawn to sharp edges, it feels like he uses a ton of sharp edges. But the reason why they stand out is because he doesn't use a lot of them. So it's a little bit counterintuitive. But if you look at this, all of this is soft, right? All of this is soft. I'm talking about the background here. All of this decking is soft. There's no hard edge. If he had used a super hard edge right here, you would notice it, right? Now, it's all the same value, which creates even a softer edge, but it's still soft. So even in this carpet, it's all soft, all of it, all of it, right? And then just especially, I mean, just everything. Look at the, anything in here nothing is hard even though it's in the background you can see just a soft treatment with every single edge and what that does is that it creates less visual importance in the background which guess what communicates better because it's saying what is important here what's the story it's not the background if, you, if the background's the point of the story it's a bad story right if the foreground and the subject is a good firm communicated point then people are going to relate with it better right so if we look at this everything's soft right the, the sh sleeves are soft those are soft i mean really like zoom into this in google arts and culture and you'll see just softness you know berserk everything is soft. even the you know even the edge between this really hard black legging if you really got in there in person i really doubt it was like this the sharpest you could possibly be but you look at this and he uses just like a few sharp sharp edges right where he uses his brushy brushwork so that's what gives this whole painting an illusion of being super brushy when in reality if you look at a lot of this this brushwork like that's a very soft edge right there all of this is worked in quite a bit now i'm not saying he's blending it with you know like his finger and he's you know scraping it off with a palette knife and all this stuff what he probably did was that he put in the main value masses like i was talking about because Sargent, as we know, used shapes. So what he would actually do is he would draw this on the canvas first, that on the canvas, this probably on the canvas. This was probably some sort of outline or how he's thinking about it in his head. And then you take all those main value masses and then you 
create edge work between them. And then what you get is just the illusion of it actually being real. But in his case, what he did is that he did all of that. And then he, sl uh, he used a brush to blend the edge conditions. So you use a secondary brush and then you edge it, you know, you basically just swipe it or you're creating a mid-tone and you kind of mix a mid-tone and then you use it and you swipe it in between these two and that creates a soft edge. So there's multiple different ways of creating soft edges. You can also do dry brushing. The mediums really help as well because if you use linseed oil or more medium, it's going to be creating softer edges just because the, the paint is a lot more loose, loosey-goosey and it's going to be blending a little bit more than if you just use dry paint or something like that. So the medium is important all this other stuff is important but you can see like really analyze and i would suggest this is just a really good exercise that helped me a lot just go to one of his paintings google arts and culture for example where you can zoom in like really really carefully go into his paintings and count how many hard edges there are because it's going to be much more surpassed by how many sh soft edges there are and that's why he's known for being so brushy is because he has such a good range of all these edges right you can see that i mean these feet down here not you can't even see them at all like that's that's completely lost right all this is lost and then you have just really sharp edge right here and then you have this really sharp edge right here and remember more contrast like i talked about my abbot there video last time more contrast will make it the edge look sharper so that's why more contrast tends to draw the eye more because it looks like it's in focus versus blurry right but if you look at this all of this like that is a soft edge between the, these two right but you don't until you see what edges are, you don't really know it. Like you don't actually, you can't even even see it. It's really weird. But then once you can tell what it is, it's, you see them everywhere, right? And if you look at this, like the treatment of this vase, it was brushy, but it's brushy in such a way that doesn't bring around a lot of really sharp edges because it would have drawn away attention from these figures. So anyways, guys, there's a lot of stuff to break down here. I mean, I could talk about this painting for, you know, years on end because there's so much to break down in every single painting, especially with a great painter like Sargent. But we talked about composition, we talked about the number of figures you want in your composition, how to overcome certain representational boundaries, the subconscious language that happens with art, uh, a lot of the beautiful effects the sergeant gets, how he gets it technique-wise and otherwise. And I hope you guys learned something. I hope you go make something beautiful and have a great day.